The morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. The mornings are cold and crisp, uh, that's for sure. And there are some icicles hanging from the muzzles of the horses, and their breath is white as they all come up for their morning feed. The cows seem happy, but they're pretty frosty too. And that hot coffee by the fire sure hits the spot when the chores are done. It's Christmas on the Ridge, and this week I've pulled out a big pile of beautiful and appropriate Christmas music and poems to bring some of the essence of ranch land at Christmas time to your radio. And we'll start out with the charming Eli Barzi. Cold wind blows across the hills. Winter time is here. Soon the sound of sleigh bells ring and wishes of good cheer. There's no place I'd rather be than right here now. Until the year is new Have a merry prairie Christmas From my prairie home to yours Across the hills we'll gather The Christ child we'll adore The new year will be welcome When we sing From the Saskatchewan plains This is by far my favorite time With family and with friends The reason why we celebrate The message that it sends There's been a lot of cowboy poetry written about Christmas. The classics go back to the turn of the century and before, and the contemporary ones are still being written in line shacks and cow camps by working cowboys. 
When it comes to reciting the classics, though, no one does it better than Red Stegall. Back in the days when cattle range was prairies wide and lone, three bar Z hands was winter camped up on the Cimarron. Their calling names was Booger Bill and Mess Compete and Tug. And though their little dugout camp was plenty warm and snug, they got plumb discontented. For with Christmas drawing near, they couldn't see no prospects of no kind of Christmas cheer. Pete spoke about the bally's he'd be missing up in Taos. Tug said he'd give his gizzard just to see a human house alight with Christmas candles. And old Booger Bill avowed he'd shoot the next galoot who spoke of Christmas cheer out loud. They sure did have the lonesomes. But the first of Christmas week, a wagon load of emigrants made camp off down the creek. They'd come out from Missouri and was heading further west, but had to stop a little while and give their team a rest. They seemed to be poor nester folks with maybe six or eight as hungry looking barefoot kids as ever licked a plate. We've just got beans to offer you, the wagon woman smiled, but if you boys will join us, I will have a big pot biled on Christmas day for dinner and we'll do the best we can to make it seem like Christmas time, although our plates is tin. Them cowboys sort of stammered, but they promised her they'd come. Then lope back to their dugout camp and things begin to hum. They whittled with their pocket knives, they sewed with rawhide threads, they hammered and they braided and they raveled rope to shreds. And they butchered out a yearling and they baked a big old roast. They scratched their heads to figure out what kids would like the most. Till when they went on Christmas day to share the nester's chuck, they had a pack horse loaded with their homemade Christmas truck. Bandana dolls for little gals with raveled rope for hair, some whittled wooden guns for boys, and for each kid a pair of rough-made rawhide moccasins. You should have seen the look upon that nester woman's face when from their pack they took a batch of pies plumb full of prunes, some taffy made a lick, and a pan of sourdough biscuits right around four inches thick. That ain't the total tally, but it sort of gives a view of what three lonesome cowboys figured out to try and do to cure the Christmas lonesomes on the Cimarron amid the wild coyotes and cattle. And they found it sure enough did. Ever see Santa in cowboy boots whirling across the floor, spurs jingling merrily? When they sing those carols soft and low, I'll be shouting, Cotton Eye Joe! Roll back the rug so we can two step round the Christmas tree. Waiting neath the mistletoe, you'll never get a kiss. I never move that slow, there's too much I could miss. Cause a western girl can't be still, and a silent night is not for me. Roll so we can two step round the Christmas tree. Red bandana, chili green, silver buckles on new blue jeans, shuffling round the floor to a yuletide melody. I'm gonna be ready when Santa comes, but I'm gonna be dancing till he does. Roll back the rug so we can two step round the Christmas tree. Wait beneath the mistletoe, you'll never get a kiss. I never move that slow, there's too much I could miss. Cause a western girl can't be still, and a silent night is not for me. Roll back the rug so we can two step round the Christmas tree. Roll back the rug so we can two step round the Christmas tree. <laughs> 
Now there's a great combination, one of the best Western music Christmas albums ever, featuring the late Curly Musgrave, R.W. Hampton, Belinda Gale, and Kip Callahan. And now, here's Carol Jarvis with a Christmas original. Some folks don't understand this, but it really isn't so strange. It's what a cowboy's life's all about, to a shepherd of the range. Coming up, a song for a Rocky Mountain Christmas and a couple more good stories, and then a song that many of you have been asking for when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. It's Christmas in the West where neighbors can be a long ways away, and that Christmas visit can just mean so much. Here's Rick Stanky and Linda Hosler from Livingston, Montana. Winter in the Rockies may come unexpected. You never know cold wind's gonna blow You may get a light chinook warming up the valley or an old blue norther bringing in the snow but We're gonna have a Rocky Mountain Christmas We're gonna celebrate the newborn king He was born to set us free and give us life eternally That's why Bells on Christmas ring It ain't always easy Feeding cattle in the winter But a cowboy's got work to do He'll do it with pride After a hot cup of coffee And the neighbors here for dinner The holidays can warm you up inside we're gonna have a Rocky Mountain Christmas We're gonna celebrate the newborn king He was born to set us free and give us life eternally That's why bells on Christmas ring For people all over the world Sending our best and seasons greetings to you. From Santa Fe to Denver, Montana to Alberta, folks all gather around the tree, young and old alike. There's turkey in the oven, relatives are coming, little buckaroos won't sleep at all tonight. Come on, everybody. We're gonna have a Rocky Mountain Christmas. We're gonna celebrate the newborn king. He was born to set us free and give us life eternally. That's why bells on Christmas ring. We're gonna have a Rocky Mountain Christmas We're gonna celebrate the newborn king He was born to set us free and give us life eternally That's why bells on Christmas ring He was born to set us free and give us life eternally That's why, That's why. bells on Christmas ring Rodney Nelson and his wife run a good cattle ranching operation in North Dakota where you know it's winter. That's actually where my dad was born. Rodney was a big hit at the Kamloops Cowboy Festival. Most of his poems are the kind that have you laughing out loud. This is one of his personal favorites called Wilbur's Christmas Gift. It hardly seemed like Christmas with the prairie brown and bare. Smoke from the country schoolhouse hung lazy in the air. The kids were out for recess when Wilbur trotted by, and everyone came running just to greet old Wilbur High. A favorite with the children, he was always so much fun, this old and weathered cowboy who was loved by everyone. He teased them each a little, till the school door opened wide, and out came the little teacher to call them back inside. 
She looked like Santa's helper in the frosty winter air, for her rosy cheeks a-blazing matched the color of her hair. Why, Merry Christmas, Wilbur! And before she let him speak, she said, Come to our Christmas program on Friday night next week. He protested just a little. He had nothing he could bring. But she told him, Listen, Wilbur, come to hear the children sing. Just to have you with us would please them to no end to do their Christmas songs and parts for such a special friend. Poor old Wilbur was embarrassed. He had nothing he could share. But darn that feisty schoolmarm made him promise he'd be there. That night he slept uneasy. But by dawn, old Wilbur knew that though a broke old bachelor, there was something he could do. In a draw down by the river, close to twenty miles away, was a dandy grove of cedars he had come across one day. So he saddled up at daybreak, and he stiffly swung astride, for the trip down to those cedars meant a long and chilling ride. Old Traveler trotted easy, and they got there before noon, but with winter days so short he must find one pretty soon. Wasn't long he found a beauty, and he cut it carefully, leaving several bottom branches so it could grow back, you see. He lashed it to the saddle for the long trip to the school, but then he got to thinking that perhaps he'd been a fool. It was just a prairie cedar. The thought made Wilbur frown. It wasn't near as fancy as the ones they sold in town. What if they didn't like it? Doubts flickered through his head, and as evening turned to moonlight, Wilbur's heart grew sick with dread. He crawled slowly from the saddle, cold and stiff and sore, and quiet as a field mouse, left that cedar by the door. The northern lights at dancing and the moon as bright as chrome lit the path to Wilbur's shanty as he swiftly jogged on home. Too tired now to worry about the week that lie ahead, Wilbur fed and watered Traveler, then dropped wearily in bed. Well, he promised that he'd be there. Though he came a little late, he heard singing from the schoolhouse as he lingered at the gate. He eased on through that doorway, and he fumbled for a chair, but he quickly smelled the fragrance of a cedar in the air. He knew he wasn't dreaming, but it sure was a surprise, the beauty of that cedar sitting right before his eyes. There were many strings of popcorn and tinsel on the tree, and all those dancing candles made it blush so specially. The star on top was shining like diamonds had been piled. It reminded him of Christmas back when he was just a child. And that program was a dandy, the best that he had known. Oh, Wilbur beamed so proudly, like each child was his own. They sang Christmas songs so special, said poems that they had learned. He had sworn they all were angels from the applause those children earned. Then at last the teacher told him that she wished with all her might to thank each and all for coming on such a cold and frosty night. Just one more thing, she smiled and said, I know you all can see that right here in the corner is a special Christmas tree. It wasn't pruned by humans, its natural beauty at its best. Old Wilbur almost fainted from the pounding in his chest. Yes, this tree is true and honest. It's so very plain and clear. It's just the way God made it, like the one who packed it here. Oh, I'm not too sure who brought it, but of guessing, I would say that horse out in the moonlight looked a lot like Wilbur's Bay. Oh, Wilbur's neck glowed brightly like the color of his shirt, and the teacher and the children hugged old Wilbur till he hurt. Wilbur's eyes, they sure got fuzzy, and they sprung a couple leaks. The hot tears ran like rivers down the side of Wilbur's cheeks. When riding home that evening, he could hear his mother say, the greatest gifts you'll get, my son, will be those you give away. You know, it must have been about 1973, maybe 74, that uh, John Denver wrote and recorded a song that's meant a lot to working cowboys. And Eli Barzi and John Cunningham worked it into a Christmas medley. It starts out with John Denver's Christmas for Cowboys, and then it moves into a beautiful arrangement of a song that a lot of you have been asking for, including George Great supporter of this show, and he listens online each week from Jacksonville, Florida. Hope you enjoy. Tall in the saddle, with 
We spend Christmas Day driving the cattle on the snow-covered plains. All of the good gifts given today. Ours is the sky and the wide open. Christmas for cowboys and the wide open plains. A campfire for one as we stop for the night. The stars overhead are the Christmas tree lights. The wind sings a hymn. Bow down to pray. It's Christmas for cowboys on the wide open plains. It's tall in the saddle. We spend Christmas Day driving the cattle on the snow covered plains. So many gifts have been opened today. Ours is the sky and the wide open range. Ours is the sky and the wide open range. There's another beautiful rendition of that song done by the Chuck Wagon Gang, but George, I wasn't able to find that one, but uh, I know you enjoyed Eli and John's great arrangement of it. When we come back, Baxter Black has a special Christmas piece, and we have a lot more songs and stories about Christmas in cattle country when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. 
Call the dogs off of the reindeer. Sandy's loading up the team and fixing to work his way south from his little ranchette just a mile post over from the North Pole. From all of us here on Spirit of the West, Hugh McClennan, Santa's Day Work Elves, and me, Baxter Black, we wish y'all a happy, happy holiday. Well, friends, thanks for listening. It'll be no surprise that I've published a beautiful new hardback book called A Commotion in Rhyme. It fits in the bunkhouse, the outhouse, the bookstore, the library, or the cookbook. Unfortunately, it won't fit in a cupcake. Buy two, get one free. A commotion? Oh. Call 800-654-2550 or baxterblack.com. Come to think of it, it might fit in a Caesar salad. You remember that Christmas a few years ago when you waited all night for old Sandy to show? Well, I heard the reason, and it just might be true. The whole bunch came down with the dang reindeer flu. The cowboy elves had been busy all day. A doctor and donner and scatter and hay. Dancer and prancer were febrile and snotty. Comet and Cupid went constantly potty. Hallucinatory dementia was rampant. Why, Blitzen imagined that he was Jed Clampett. And Dasher got schizo and thought he was Trigger. While Vixen's obsessions got bigger and bigger. And by noon, Santa knew they should find substitutes. So the cowboy elves went out searching recruits. They scoured the Arctic for suitable prey and brought them together to hook to the sleigh. When Santa climbed up, it was like a bad dream. He stared down the lines at the substitute team. A bull moose as old as the planks on the ark with a head as big as a hammerhead shark stood hitched by a cow, Mrs. Santy's, of course. And then next in the tugs was the Clydesdale horse. He was paired with an elk whose antlers were crossed. An ostrich, a walrus, an old albatross were harnessed in line, but the last volunteer was a blue heeler dog with only one ear. The cowboy elves gave a push to the sled. The Sandy reared back, cracked his whip, then he said, On Cleo! On Leo! On Lefty and Jake! On Morphus Redondo! On Loopy and Snake! Smoke from the runners cut tracks in the snow. The team headed south, but where else could they go? By the time they hit Kansas, the tugs had gone slack, and all but the dog was now riding in back. Sandy was desperate. What on earth could he do? Then the lights of an airport hove into his view. Did they make it? You betcha. But here hangs the tale of how on that Christmas they stayed on the trail. A man ran to the window and threw up the sash and heard someone shouting, For Pete's sakes, don't crash on budget. On thrifty, look out, Alamo. I didn't take out the insurance, you know. And you, number two, try harder. You're Avis on dollar. On Hertz, rent or act, you can save us an extra day to charge if we make it by nine. Though the drop-off will cost us a bundle this time. Merry Christmas, yelled Sandy. But he was all smiles, because at least he'd signed up for unlimited miles. So that's how it happened, as best I recall, when it looked like that Christmas might not come at all. And the truth of the matter, we all owe a cheer to the Wichita office of rent a reindeer. This is Baxter Black wishing all my compadres that listen to us on Spirit of the West with the one and only Hugh McLennan a mighty Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. How about a weekend pass to the 23rd Annual Kamloops Cowboy Festival, March 14th to 17th, 2019. Just about the finest lineup of talent we've ever had. Michael Fleming. On the back roads of Utah near the San Rafael, and old rough stock rider strides to the corral. Gene Prescott. Did it swing down from the saddle, and he take me in his arms. Tim Huss. The band's tuning up and they're stalking the bar. Ranchers are coming from near and far. Special guest Lewis the Big Rig McIver and so many more. The BC Cowboy Hall of Fame inductions, dinner shows, daytime entertainment, a spectacular art and gear show, workshops on everything from songwriting to saddle making. The best place to get all the information is bcchs.com. And to order tickets, call one 888 763-2221. Experience the true spirit of the West at Canada's largest Western store, Irvine Tack at Western Wear. If you need a curb strap or a four-star gooseneck trailer, you'll find it here. A saddle for every rider. Cutters, rainers, penners, trainers, working ranch cowboys, ropers. They have over 1,200 in stock. And they have Western Wear for the entire family. And how about a gift card? Shop online at irvinesaddles.ca. Free shipping on orders of over $100. IrvineSaddle.ca, 1-877-946-9494. 
Well, this has been a phenomenal year for a young country singer from Alberta who actually kind of got a good boost for his career years ago at the Kamloops Cowboy Festival, where he was a young rising star. He had a single release hit the top of the charts this year and another one that looks like it's headed that way, too. He's moved with his young wife to Music City, USA, in Nashville, and good things seem to be happening for this young ranch kid from Flat Lake, Alberta, where his family raised speckled park cattle, the only established breed completely developed in Canada. Flat Lake is close enough for you to see the lights of St. Paul at night, and here's Brett Kissel. I've been gone for nearly all. But I'm coming back to spend the holidays And there's just one click to go And shining across the snow Is that old familiar glow of my hometown And I just can't wait No, I just can't wait There's something about this time of year There's something about it all It's like a holy night With the stars shining of St. Paul I start singing all those Christmas songs that I'll hear soon and when I get there a subtle scent of pine will fill the room yeah when I get this close to the ones I love the most I'll speed up a little just to make good time I just can't wait No, I just can't wait There's something about this time of year There's something about it all It's like a holy night With the stars shining bright When I see the lights of St. Paul Cause I just can't wait No, I just can't wait There's something about this time of year There's something about it all It's like a holy night With the stars shining bright When I see the lights of St. Paul When I see the lights of St. Paul I went out Christmas shopping in a great big shopping mall. There were stores on every end of it, even set up down the hall. I was looking for that perfect gift, but things all looked the same. The clothes, the toys, the gadgets, and those new electronic games. Another thing in every store that always looked the same were signs. Have an old-fashioned Christmas. Thank you. Come again. Now, folks, I'm no spring chicken. I've seen lots of Christmases pass. It's not the gifts that mean anything. It's all the good memories that last. Somehow, I don't think those merchants would want those signs to come true because there wouldn't be very much spending on presents for me and for you. I remember an old-fashioned Christmas when we'd cut down a fresh cedar tree. We'd string lots of rose hips and popcorn. The trimmings were homemade and free. It would go up a few days before Christmas. Nowadays, just like in this mall, the trees are all up in October. Thanksgiving's not noticed at all. The stockings we hung up on Christmas Eve were the kind that come off of our feet. We'd always have cookies we made with our moms so Santa'd have something to eat. 
And of course, Santa come every Christmas, but he'd only bring one special toy, or maybe a coat or a new pair of boots, just one thing for each girl and boy. And instead of fighting the mobs and crowds in a great big shopping mall, we'd go to town on Saturday night. The local dime store had most all of anything anyone could ever want, and every one-horse town was full of friends and neighbors who had come in for miles around. The women would trade their cream and eggs for groceries and, of course, Christmas candy. That was the only credit back then before credit cards became easy and handy. Oh, and remember those good Christmas programs at the church in the old country school? The men would stand in the back of the room because there was a shortage of chairs as a rule. And remember how Grandma and Grandpa would bring only one gift for us all? It was usually homemade and practical. Back then, grandparents didn't buy out the mall. Oh, and that good Christmas music didn't come from a stereo set. Just my dad on his fiddle and a guitar or two it still was the best music yet. Oh, and speaking of dad, he'd get out the Bible and read us the old Christmas story. It wasn't about Santa or elves or a sleigh. Sure filled our hearts with glory. So I wish you an old-fashioned Christmas like those signs read all over the mall. And I wish that somehow we could turn back the clock, have the old-fashioned kind after all. You wouldn't be spending much money. You wouldn't be worried or stressed. And you'd find that an old-fashioned Christmas, like the ones I recall, would be best. And that's ranch wife Yvonne hauling back and her version of an old-fashioned Christmas. Well, coming up, more of the special music and stories of Christmas on the Rangeland when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Christmas out on Gabriola Island is pretty green most of the time. That's where Gary and Lynn Velgard live. Gary still spends a lot of time touring around the country, and folks still love to see him. Anyhow, here's Gary with the story of what happened one Christmas Eve. Every Christmas Eve this tale is told. When the blizzards come and the blizzards blow, how Santa got stuck in the driving snow. And Santa put a saddle on a reindeer. Way out of west one Christmas Eve The wind was cold, the snow was deep Santa put socks on the reindeer feet Trying to get some traction As the legend goes, that stormy night The world was all one shade of white Santa's sleigh was a sorry sight In a cloud bank fast and frozen Hey, what in the world am I gonna do? Santa Claus, he cried to his crew To miss one Christmas just won't do So Santa put a saddle on a reindeer Santa put a saddle on a reindeer To miss one Christmas just won't do So Santa put a saddle on a reindeer The white-eyed kids, they gather day around it's a ranch in the hills will never be found We're a hundred miles from the nearest town Our Christmas list forgotten The chores got done that stormy night They all sang songs by the lantern light Santa was still nowhere in sight But they dreamed of Christmas morning Hey, what in the world am I gonna do? Santa Claus, he cried to his crew To miss one Christmas just won't do So Santa put a saddle on a reindeer Santa put a saddle on a reindeer To miss one Christmas just won't do So Santa put a saddle on a reindeer Santa took off his toque and he put on a hat He saddled up Dancer and said, that's that he threw some toys in a gunny sack And he slung them up over his shoulder There was a streak of light through the driving snow With a yippee i -A. Oh, ho, ho, ho He flew as straight as an arrow goes That jolly Christmas cowboy Hey, what in the world am I gonna do? Santa Claus, he cried to his crew Then this one Christmas just won't do So Santa put a saddle on a reindeer 
Santa put a saddle on a reindeer To miss one Christmas just won't do So Santa put a saddle on a reindeer Santa put a saddle on a reindeer To miss one Christmas just won't do So Santa put a saddle on a reindeer Every Christmas Eve his tale is told When the blizzards come and the blizzards blow Santa got stuck in the driving snow Santa put a saddle on a reindeer S. Omar Barker is probably best known for his Cowboy's Christmas Prayer, but the Canadian-born poet has written hundreds of classics over the years. Here's Dick Morton with S. Omar Barker's Line Camp Christmas Letter. Inside an old west line camp, sitting on his lonely bed, a cowboy wrote a letter home, and this is what it said. Dear folks, looks like Christmas time is coming on again, and I ain't wrote no letter since the devil don't know when. So now I thought I'd drop a line, just like I done last year, to let you know I'm safe and well and full of Christmas cheer. Seems like the news ain't much to tell. A blizzard blowing now. There'll be some cattle drifting. Merry Christmas, anyhow. I've been out riding most all day. The horse I rode went lame. The cattle sure are scattered. Merry Christmas, just the same. Last night my water holes froze up. Snow sure is slow to thaw. Some cattle looking poorly. Merry Christmas, Pa and Ma. This line camp shack has got some cracks that lets the snow sift through. Well, Merry Christmas to you folks, and Happy New Year, too. Excuse this crooked writing. Got my hands frostbit, I guess. The cattle sure are drifting. Merry Christmas, Frank and Bess. Axe handle busted. Woodpile low. Ain't got much fire tonight. The drifts have knocked some line fence down. I trust you're all all right. My pot of beans boiled dry and scorched while I was out today. Them cows are drifting awful. Merry Christmas, anyway. Well, folks, I've got to cut this short and mend my busted rope. Just thought I'd drop a little line. You all keep well, I hope. This cowboy life is wonderful. Sure glad I came out west. Give my regards to Adelaide and Jack and all the rest. I'm glad I ain't a cow tonight. Outside, I hear him bawl. Poor critters sure are drifting. Merry Christmas to you all. That old north wind Howling way up in the timber Only choir I remember When I was riding on the line One lone star Hanging over the horizon Put there for the wise men Who were following heaven's sign The snow-capped peaks Like the angels in their glory Seem to sing an ancient story As the wind blows through the pines Drifting along To the sound of spurs that jingle Silver bells are ringing It's Christmas on the line The snow-capped peaks Like the angels in their glory 
seem to sing an ancient story As the wind blows through the pines Drifting along To the sound of spurs a jingling Silver bells are ringing It's Christmas on the line It sounds like sleigh bells ring. It's Christmas on the line. And that's uh, Barry Ward, the WMA's Entertainer of the Year, with Michael Martin Murphy's Christmas on the Line. And there's much more music, more special songs, stories, and poems about Christmas on the rangeland when the spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Boy, I can't believe we're nearly to the end of another Christmas show. And I've been kind of saving the best for the last. We introduced this one last year, and I said then that it should become a Christmas classic. So if you can, maybe just take a couple of minutes to really pay attention, turn it up a bit, maybe even call the kids in to hear Brian Salmond and the story of Rusty the Christmas Cayuse. <laughs> If Rusty was born to be special, it never showed up in his form. His temperament cursed by the evils that swirl in the midst of a bad winter storm. Like the front of a North Ragin' blizzard, he had far too much white in his eye, and the blaze on his face ran crooked and wide. His appearance was crafty and sly. He had a twist in his nerve that was spooky and cold. He'd set you up time and again. He'd blow up in a second at shadows and sound and thunder and lightning and rain. And yet the colt had some traits that showed promise, if he happened to just get the chance. Though his sire and his dam were in question at times at helping the breed to advance. So we knew he would need special handling and assigned him to Leonard LaRue. Smithers, the boss, claimed Leonard would know all the ways to make him subdue. With patience and time and the touch of a hand that's been seasoned by years of a trade, Rusty was molded and rated the best of the cow ponies Leonard had made. While the seasons rolled on into winter, with Christmas just over the rim, and the boys on the ranch saw the neighbor's demise, the yuletide would be kind of grim. Cause Benson had married the widow McKinney at a wedding sometime in May, and adopted her six hungry children with the seventh one well on the way. So they pooled their winnings from the last poker game and went off to town on a spree. And they bargained and shopped and wrapped up some gifts, as slick and as neat as can be. There was roly-poly clowns and slinkies, a kid's rope and a miniature train, and a doll that cried mama when you rolled it around and wet itself time and again. A fanciful teacup and saucer to match in respect for the wife of the house, and a mickey of shine for Wilbur himself and some tea for his dear loving spouse. Licorice and peppermint sticks, store-bought cookies and a dozen fancy candy canes and a carton of snuff if Wilbur gave in and started his chewing again. Well, they bundled it up in a brown sack tied fast with a ribbon of red, then elected the pair to deliver the goods, an honor, or so they all said, and they dressed Leonard up in a toque and a beard, a Santa as sure as can be, and taught him to laugh like jolly Saint Nick and let children sit on his knee. The Santa set stirrup and mounted with ease, and the elves handed Santa the pack, the dolly cried out in startled dismay as she rolled from her front to her back. Now Rusty had heard lots of squalling, but this really rang his alarm. He rationed the devil was after his hide and jumped to gain clearance from harm. So the partnership took leave of absence as Rusty lit out on his own. He crossed the yard pitching and bawling like his heart had been carved out of stone. And Leonard was scratching to button the latch to save face in front of the crew. Tornadoes and twisters were lambs in their wake to the havoc that old Rusty knew. In midstream, he blowed both his stirrups. They rose like a bird on the wing. The one split his lip and rattled his teeth while the other one made his bell ring. He rode out three jumps on the cantle. On the fourth one, he left for the horn. His voice gained an octave while he called Rusty out, discussing the day he was born. Stay with him, Leonard, he's weakening, yelled out Sparky Barrows with pride, because he knew the cowboy was winning and he knew that the cowboy could ride. Before long, old Rusty threw in the towel and pointed his ears to the south. 
and Leonard relaxed as Rusty Seth dried and rattled the bit in his mouth. The trip down the valley was lengthy and cold, but the big horse was quick on his gates. Leonard, he grinned as he visioned the kids, all wide-eyed, he hardly could wait. As he rode in the yard of the Bensons, the lamplight was flooding the snow, and the sky was alive with the moon and the stars, a Christmas Eve heavenly glow. The handshakes and haulers in each smiling face, it sure was a heartwarming sight. Tyrell hugged Becky and said, told you, sis, that Santa would find us tonight. As Santa gave out all his presents, Benson faltered, then struggled to speak. Thank you, Hoss, and thank them dang elves, as a single tear rolled down his cheek. His mission accomplished, Santa mounted his steed, he turned and was gone in a storm. As he distanced himself from the yard at the ranch, his inner soul started to warm. He had such a powerful feeling that swelled up the heart in his chest. Leonard patted the neck of the gelding and announced he was one of the best. The rhythm of hoofbeats drummed out a song that was filled with peace and goodwill, and Leonard whistled Silent Night as they crested the rise of the hill, and he pondered the Savior's burthen on that ranch far away across the land. The outfit called the Bethlehem lay in peace in the cup of God's hand. They were home at a quarter to midnight, and he bed Rusty down in his stall. His groin was a wreck, his thigh muscles bruised, but he smiled for the worth of it all. Rusty, I really ought to shoot you for blowing up and crossing me today. But he wished them a Merry Christmas and doubled his oats and his hay. Merry Christmas, everyone. Tom Cole and friends providing the background music for Brian Salmon's wonderful story. Well, thank you so much for making the ride this week. On behalf of my bride, Billy, our great support crew, Mark and Kathy McMillan, the ranch horses, Lucky, Cody, Blazy, Blazer, and Stanley, the cows and the barn cats, we hope your Christmas is the best ever and you have a super new year. And uh, make sure you join us next week for the best of last year. We'll pick out the highlights of the last 51 programs and put them together into a year-end special. Oh, yes, and if you'd like to join us on our next Spirit of the West cruise, the number to call for all the information, 1-800-530-0131. And you can get all the details on our website. Just push the cruise button at hugh mclennancom Till next week, I'm Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon. Mm -hmm.